Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. It's really difficult to kind of guess exactly what the intent of the person that created this would be, other than perhaps to reduce, uh, you know, overall trust in the media and in the messaging platform on Facebook. By now, Facebook users have probably seen multiple posts telling them not to accept another friend request from someone who is already their friend. But officials are saying this is a viral hoax. And when you think you're warning your friends of a virus, you're actually just helping to spread the scam. Valley News team's Rose Itzkovitz has more on the chain messages going around and how some say it's not all fake. You may have seen posts like this popping up on your Facebook news feed. This one came from my friend Paul. He received three separate messages telling him he was hacked. They all basically say the same thing, and each one asked him to forward the warning along to all his friends. Luckily, he didn't. It looks like they're trying to get people to forward the message on. Jeremy Straub, who works in cybersecurity at NDSU, says it's really just chain mail. What they're trying to get you to do in this case is to forward this message on to your friends and colleagues and family to try to get them to forward it on further and further and further. Straub says it's not necessarily trying to steal your information. But it could create kind of a chain where somebody might follow up with another message where they might ask somebody to do something that is more detrimental like that. A simple Google can let you see if your account has in fact been duplicated. But Straub cautions. Others may simply have your same name. But while these messages may be a hoax, it doesn't mean actual profile clones aren't happening. West Fargo mom Destiny Dolan says just a couple days ago, she got a second friend request from her aunt. We made a phone call and asked her if she had made a new Facebook and she said no, and to either delete them or block that person itself. But she says the hacker seems to have gone away after a simple threat. She somehow got a hold of this person with a new Facebook account and basically said, I need you to deactivate this and stop contacting my friends and family. And if you don't, I'm going to take it to law enforcement. And that's what Jeremy Straub says you should do. And there are a lot of great resources out there that you, you know you can report this type of stuff to if you're concerned. In Fargo, Rose Skivitz, Valley News Live. Straub also tells us his students have been working to create algorithms to identify fake news, election security, and other related issues. Authorities want you to know about a high-risk sex offender who will soon be living in Cass Lake, Minnesota. Michael Black is being released into the community on October 15th. He has a history of sexual contact with boys and girls from ages 7 to 15. He used a position of authority, physical force, and threats of a weapon to assault his victims. Level 3 sex offender are the most likely to recommit disturbing crimes. We now know the name of the victim who was seriously hurt in a Grand Forks train incident. Authorities say 21-year-old Jacob Huber is dealing with non-life-threatening injuries. It happened around 1.30 yesterday morning. An investigation revealed that Huber got onto a moving train near downtown Grand Forks and then he tried to jump off near the 1500 block of Dyke Avenue. He was run over by the train, which caused severe injuries. When emergency officials arrived, Huber was transported to the Altru ER. Fergus Falls police have arrested six people after a drug bust in the city. The police department posted on Facebook saying last Friday they executed a search warrant in the 400 block of South Peck Street. They arrested the six people you see right there on your screen. Four were taken in for drug charges. Two were arrested for probation violations. Authorities also found meth and hydrocodone pills. For all their names and charges, go to our website, valleynewslive.com. We seem to be locked into a wet weather pattern. Can't seem to shake the clouds or the rain. Robert, are we looking at a wet evening too? Yeah, the uh, cool conditions, the rainy conditions from time to time, those will continue as we head through the evening and through the overnight hours. Could see a little bit of snow in our western counties late tonight and early on your Tuesday. Right now, not much of a range in those temperatures, ranging from the upper 30s into the mid 40s. 42 right now in Fargo, also 42 up in the Grand Forks area. Those winds have been on the breezy side right now, primarily out of the north and northeast, around 5 to 15 miles per hour with some gusts over 20 miles per hour. Those breezy conditions stay with us tonight. Those winds even pick up a bit as we head through your Tuesday. A lot of clouds once again underneath those clouds, some showers. They continue to move on off towards the north and northeast. And again, late tonight with some cooler air off towards the west, could see some snow in our far western counties. More on that here in just a few minutes. Here in Fargo, as we head through the evening, temperatures steady to slowly falling to right around 40 degrees, wind chills in the 30s. More rain 
and snow chances as we head through the next several days. And we'll detail those chances coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. An inmate at the Barnes County Jail died while behind bars. The inmate is identified as 25-year-old Lonnie Bradley of Valley City. The state's attorney says he was in jail on a terrorizing charge. Authorities say Bradley died Friday evening. No other details, though, are being released, and the case is still under investigation. A Botno man has been charged with felony manslaughter in a deadly shooting. 19-year-old Carlos Valentin is accused of accidentally shooting Devon Maine on Wednesday while handling a handgun he didn't know was loaded. Maine was pronounced dead at a hospital. Valentin appeared in court Friday but did not enter a plea. His bond was set at $500,000 cash. He faces up to 10 years in prison if convicted. A Minnesota man is in jail after police say he broke into someone's house, leading to a three-hour standoff with police. It happened yesterday morning just before 5 on the northwest side of Jamestown. The homeowners were not home, but their surveillance system notified them of someone breaking in. They returned home and found two broken door frames, but were able to get a family member out of the house safely. When police arrived, they ordered the intruder to come out, but they say he barricaded himself inside. The SWAT team eventually arrested 20-year-old Chase Urey of Proctor, Minnesota, for criminal trespassing, criminal mischief, and minor in consumption. Con uh, minor, in con uh, minor in consumption. Whether you're texting or on social media, it can be hard to break away from your cell phone. But Apple's new iOS feature called Screen Time might be able to help you and your children spend less time on your devices, especially if you're concerned that screens are taking time away from sleep, homework or exercise. Valley News Team's Maddie Jelseth shows us how it works. Screen time can help parents regulate how much their child can be on their phone by setting app limits. It can also restrict access to certain web browsers. Never allow certain websites. Basically, it records all your screen time, gives you a little readout at the end of the week. A new study shows that limiting children's screen time to less than two hours a day can help them with their brain function skills. I think this will help people become more productive in their everyday lives instead of being on their own phone all the time. Regulating how much you're on your phone can help you become the best role model you can be. Children learn by what they see and so if you as a parent are constantly not watching or interacting with them you're always interacting with your device that's what they're going to want to do too. Leach says the new feature helps her family balance technology. I think there are some good screen time things and a lot of things are computerized so it's like you want to have your kids have those skills too but you want them to still interact with the real world. <laughs> you can't experience the real world without setting down the phone first. In Fargo, Maddie Jalseth, Valley News Live. Researchers have also found limiting screen time and getting enough sleep can help children with their cognitive skills as well. You may have run into road congestion in Moorhead today. Crews have closed at 24th Avenue South between 13th and 14th Streets South so they can do an emergency repair on a private sewer service. There is a detour in place. The closure is expected to last for one week and should be completed by next Monday, October 15th. Of course, that's weather permitting. Plenty of pheasant hunters are heading to Laverne, Minnesota this weekend as the city hosts the opening of pheasant hunting season. The DNR says 2018 roadside survey found a 19% increase in the pheasant index. It is the eighth and final year Mark Dayton will attend as governor. He inaugurated the event in 2011. The DNR says hunters spend $725 million each year in Minnesota in direct hunting related expenditures like equipment, food and lodging. That's an average of a little over $1,400 per hunter. Travel and tourism generate $15 billion in leisure and hospitality gross sales in Minnesota. New Kids on the Block is slated to bring their 80s pop hits to the Twin Cities next spring. The XL Energy Center announced uh, today that the iconic boy band will bring their mixtape tour to St. Paul on June 11th with special guests Salt and Peppa, Tiffany, Debbie Gibson, and Naughty by Nature. Tickets for the throwback pop and hip hop concert will go on sale to the general public on Friday. The mixtape tour will start on May 2nd in Cincinnati and hit 53 cities before ending in Florida on July 14th.